The sound of chains dragging along the hard floor, screams that echo in dark bare rooms, and a sinister entity that wants to tear you apart, are what awaits you at the old jail in St. Augustine, Florida. What made this place so haunted? Was it the abuse that was inflicted, starvation, or slave labour for profit that left angry spirits forever locked inside a place that slowly killed them? What the hell is that where I'm wanting to build my hotel? A county jail? Nope, that won't do. Tear it down. Wanting his new Ponce de Leon hotel to offer the best of everything, including scenic views, Henry Flagler made a deal with the county. He paid $10,000 to have a new jail designed and built by PJ Pauley Jail Company, the same guys that would later build Alcatraz in San Francisco. Don't you worry, I'll make this place look real cozy and cute. The outside will hide all your jailhouse shenanigans. Remember, this is going to be a tourist town. No one needs an eyesore. But all Flagler cared about was how much money he was going to make. He didn't give a crap about the living conditions at the jail, just as long as it was kept hidden away like a dirty secret. Life inside for the inmates was beyond horrific, and trust me when I say you didn't need to be a serious criminal to end up in here. There were some mean convicts inside the jail, but you could also find yourself inside on charges like loitering or being intoxicated. Worse still is that if you were sent to the old jail, it was pretty much a death sentence. The original building could hold about 72 male and 12 female prisoners. Inside, there was the north wing to house the general population, a maximum security area, solitary confinement as well as the women's section. Inmates would also be segregated by colour too, which was steadfastly adhered to. If you were sent to solitary confinement, you'd be locked away in a blacked out room, no bed, no waste bucket. You'd have to get your bearings by touch and choose the place where you would do your business, shall we say, and not get it mixed up, as you could end up lying in your own filth. Time inside this area could be up to three months, and you were guaranteed to go crazy while in there. Every person would come out covered in their own waist and mumbling, crying, or screaming. It was something you didn't want to have happen to you. Today, Visitors to solitary confinement are given a challenge by the staff while touring the facility. They're told to sit alone in the cell and look to the far left corner. There are loads of reports of an inmate seen lingering there, showing themselves as a shadowy figure that will suddenly lunge, trying to grab you. The majority that did the test have been left shocked by what they experienced, while others who witnessed nothing later stated that they found scratch marks on their stomachs the very next day. Who might this angry spirit be? Well, there are a couple of ideas on this. One being a man named Sim Jackson, who was hung in 1908, after slaughtering his wife with a razor in 1906. The other possible candidate is Charlie Powell, who was arrested for killing a man who had been spreading rumors about his wife. Charlie was treated terribly at the end of his life, as he was hanged twice after the first attempt failed. Others believe the entity in this area might be something a lot more sinister, something created from residual energy left behind by all the cruelty, hatred and evil. Visitors describe it as a feeling of lustful hunger that seeps from the shadow wanting to hurt and destroy. One comment on TripAdvisor stated, the shadow felt like it was trying to consume me. Death row inmates will be housed in maximum security, a place that was equipped with a torture cage, stockades, and a fantastic front row view of the execution area. In the time that it was in operation, a total of eight men were hung at the old jail. The really twisted thing is you would build your own gallows, adding more anxiety and stress to an already messed up scenario. When you were hung, the next person in line to be killed would dismantle it, only to rebuild again for when they were to be executed. Now, that's a disturbing thing to do to anyone, right? With all the horror that was endured inside, many men and women would start to lose their minds. Visitors have reported hearing moaning and wailing coming from the maximum security and solitary confinement areas. Now, during the day, male prisoners would be hired out for profit to local plantation owners and would work all day in the blistering Florida heat. They would travel in tiny cages, shackled together, they were not offered the proper tools to work, and many didn't even have shoes on their feet, often returning to their hellhole of a jail 
with open wounds and infections. Locals today often complain about hearing the loud clunking sounds of chains and shuffling footsteps as ghostly figures hobble back inside their eternal hell. Even visitors to the jail have reported hearing this and sensing that they're not alone. You'd never want to show any signs of weakness either, as this could be used against you. Guests and staff at the old jail have mentioned hearing the voices of old inmates in their cells and hallways of the building, talking or crying <laughs> quietly, trying to hide their distress from their cellmates. And don't for one minute think that if you got sick, they would care enough to treat your symptoms either. Why waste the money on you when you are so easily replaced? Sick patients would be separated from the rest of the population so as not to spread infection. If you recovered, then great, back to work you go. But if you didn't and you died, that would be the only time a doctor would set foot inside that jail. Well, that and hanging days. Prisoners were not expected to live past two years and would often die from illness, malnutrition, violence and execution by hanging. Cholera and tuberculosis, and among other diseases, would run rampant throughout the jailhouse. But not wanting it to be known just how many died, the county would fix the numbers so they didn't look as bad. The really messed up thing is that any money the prison received for the labour was meant to go towards the jail's maintenance. But instead, the sheriff in charge, Joe Perry, and the guards would pocket the money for themselves. After a crazy long day of back-breaking work and scorching heat, the men would be marched back to the jail, chained at the ankles. But there'd be no relaxing shower or bath upon the return, as there was nothing, not even toilets. You would get a bucket that would be passed around from cell to cell, making the environment smell putrid. And as there was no glass in the windows, the nasty aroma would entice flies, which was a huge problem as they'd spread even more disease. The beds were no more than a slab of wood which is infested with termites, with a mattress stuffed with Spanish moss that was also infested with bugs. Workers and visitors to the old jail have mentioned the smell of sewage lingering in the air, even though there is none to be found inside. Others have commented on a sickly sweet smell that may be the sense of infection and death. The staff at the old jail have tried to combat these aromas, but they seem to linger on, just like the entities trapped inside. Now you can imagine the frustration that these guys felt, and with nothing to do but sit in a cramped cell, prisoners would often take to beating each other to take out their frustrations. Sadly, the guards did the same thing to the prisoners, so either way you could easily end up the victim of a serious beating. But if you thought the men had it rough, it was worse for the women, who often had done nothing to land themselves inside this place. If you didn't have a family, were thought to be of low character, have a mental disorder, have no husband, or be easy on the eyes, these could be factors to land you inside. Not only were these ladies huddled together like the men in cells far too small to contain them comfortably, their official duties were to cook and clean for the male prisoners and the sheriff's family. They would cook all day over piping hot stoves in temperatures over 100 degrees with no air conditioning or way to escape the air that was stifling. Women were known to physically drop in the kitchen dead from the work conditions alone. Even though they were given food at the prison, the inmates would often be close to starvation. So in a jail that was filled with rodents and other vermin, the men and women would often catch what they could and supplement their diets on those tasty treats. One thing that was readily available and they could have as much as they wanted was coffee, as this would give them more energy and stem their appetites. But worse yet, women would also be pimped out as sex workers and raped by the guards, which is why if you were found attractive you might end up in the jail. They knew they'd be able to make a pretty penny from turning you into a sex slave. Several visitors have reported hearing a cackling laugh coming <laughs> from the women's cells. Could it be the sound of a poor woman slowly losing her mind? While the jail was in operation, there would be dogs that lived at the old jail, probably used as a way to control the prisoners as well as being a family pet to the sheriff. The sight of a large animal gnashing its teeth at you would certainly be enough to make you back down if you were causing trouble. 
But even though the days of animals living in the jail is long gone, the sound of dogs barking can still be heard within the grounds. Now the old jail was in operation for over 60 years. In that time, the authorities did try to close the place down due to reports of living conditions and treatments of the inmates. But the records office would somehow burn to the ground before any investigation could be carried out. And this didn't happen once, but a few times, as let's face it, this place was their cash cow and they didn't want to lose that, did they? As you can see, there is plenty of haunted activity. So if you decide to visit the old jail in St. Augustine, be prepared. You might sense someone close to you that isn't there. Feel cold spots that send shivers down your spine or a hand touching your shoulder trying to grab your attention. Some visitors have even reported the spirits being even more hands-on, pulling hair or blowing on their neck. Whatever happens, you will certainly leave the place feeling glad you weren't around back then to witness the horrors these poor guys went through.